Last week, I made a video called How to Make Linux Mainstream, which talked about a bunch of things that I think that the Linux space needs to do to get a Linux-based operating system into the hands of most people, and how I'm trying to do that with my distro, still OS. And one of the things I used a lot as an example for that video is Valve and SteamOS. Now, only a couple days after I released that video, uh, Valve released the new Steam machine. And this is a new Linux-based gaming console, similar to what the Steam Deck was, but now for your TV. And with that, I think that Valve has a very similar goal to what I am trying to do with SteamOS, and that is get Linux out to as many different people as possible. But although in Valve's case, they're focusing specifically on doing that for gaming. To prove my point, uh, let's look at some of the history so far involving Valve and Linux. Starting in 2012 with the release of Windows 8, Gabe Newell called Windows 8 a catastrophe for PC gaming, and they were worried about Microsoft in the future trying to lock down the platform and everything. And around that time, Valve realized Microsoft could easily destroy Valve by just locking down Windows and making Steam a unviable solution for gaming on Windows. With that, the same year, Valve came out with their beta for Steam for Linux, trying to diversify the available platform Steam is on. And then in 2015, they came out with their first Steam machine, which ran the original Steam OS, which essentially was Debian booting into Steam Big Picture mode. Now, now, the original Steam machines flopped for a variety of reasons. One, at the time, SteamOS could not run Windows games at all. You're forced to specifically Linux native games. Two, I think the marketing was somewhat poor because they were partnering with manufacturers like Alienware, and they're kind of marketing it as gaming PCs that function as consoles thanks to SteamOS. But for most people, they didn't actually work as gaming PCs because like I said earlier, it couldn't run most of your existing PC games. Lastly, I think the original Steam controller was kind of a poor design, but I don't think that was the main reason. Now, lucky for the Linux community, Valve did not give up trying to create an alternative platform to Windows. In 2018, they came out with the Proton compatibility layer for Linux. At the time, it only supported like 20 something games. It was a very specific list, but it very, very quickly grew into supporting tons of other games. With that in 2025, Proton can now run the overwhelming majority of Linux games as long as they do not have anti-cheat that is incompatible with Proton. Now, unfortunately, that is a lot of massive games like Valorant, Fortnite, League of Legends, games like that will not run on current Linux distros, but pretty much any single player game nowadays should work now. Even most multiplayer games that are older or do not have such invasive anti-cheat work. With that in 2022, Valve finally had the technology ready with Proton to try again in the console market with the Steam Deck. Now the Steam Deck was a success, but for now it still remains kind of a relatively niche thing. As a university student, I don't go over to my friends' houses and see them having Steam Decks. I see them have Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and a few Xboxes, but that's just because I'm from the Seattle area. I'll get to that later. Xbox is not doing good right now. So it was a pretty good success, but it's still not like a full mainstream thing. However, I kind of see the potential in the Steam machine becoming a mainstream thing. Xbox right now has already been having a really, really bad time. Sales have been dropping. It's number three in the console race right now by a wide margin compared to Nintendo and Sony. Pretty much the only thing they have going for them is how good of a deal Game Pass used to be, although they did raise the price. I'd argue it's still a decent deal, but the entire gaming community would seem to disagree with me there. And Microsoft has been doing this weird marketing where kind of trying to treat like their whole gaming ecosystem with Windows as one platform, that being Xbox. And it seems like they're almost trying to get people away from the console and just use their Windows PC as their Xbox. It's a really bizarre marketing strategy that I don't really understand, to be honest. Obviously, Microsoft's a billion dollar corporation. They definitely have their own goals and reasons with this campaign. But to me, why would I buy an Xbox when they're telling me that my Windows PC is an Xbox? Speaking of Windows, as I said in my last video, the Windows 11 experience right now is horrible. It seems like the modern Windows 11 experience is just Microsoft trying to sell you another one of their products at every little angle you click on. You go through the setup screen, you get bombarded with six, seven different Microsoft products. You open the start menu, there's ads there. This is all stuff I was talking about in my last video. And so with that, a lot of people are super frustrated with the modern Windows experience and people want something different. Just recently, uh, my stepdad upgraded his gaming PC from Windows 10 to 11 and 
This is the same stepdad I was talking about in my last video who told me what Linux was the first time, and he was telling me it's a buggy, unfinished, unreliable operating system only nerds use. Yet just this week with the announcement of the Steam Machine, he started asking me how he could turn his old gaming PC into his own Steam Machine. With that, the brand reception that SteamOS currently has is excellent right now. People love how seamless of a console style experience Valve has been able to make with SteamOS. And on top of that, there's a growing movement of gamers right now who are trying out distributions like Bazite similar to SteamOS, all as like a whole movement that's a giant fuck you to Microsoft. Still though, this is kind of only a thing happening in the enthusiast space. The majority of people right now are still using Windows because they don't know that a better option exists yet. Enter the Steam Machine. The Steam Machine is a console first, a PC second, even if Valve likes to throw around the word PC in their marketing. People are not buying the Steam Machine to use as a PC. They're buying it because they want a console. PC gaming is excellent with all the freedom you get. Uh, I also prefer keyboard and mouse to controllers. There's a lot of reasons to game on a PC but ease of use is not one of those reasons. And so I see this as a console that brings the whole PC gaming experience, like you can plug this into a keyboard and mouse and use it as a computer, but without the hassle of a PC gaming experience. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about the specs of the new Steam Machine. People have been describing it as slightly better than the Xbox Series X, but slightly worse than a PlayStation 5. Now, people are concerned right now because we're currently five years into the PS5 console generation, and so probably in the next three to four years, we're going to go to on to the next console generation. And when that happens, I don't know if the Steam Machine spec wise will be very well positioned for that, which could prove to be a problem. However, I don't think it's as big of a problem as people are stating for a couple reasons. One, user experience and form factor matters a lot. That is why the Switch did so well, even though it entered the PS4 generation super late halfway through that generation because of the failed Wii U. And the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One completely smoked the power of the Switch. Now, I would like to argue that the Steam Machine on launch may deliver a better experience for a lot of people than the PlayStation and the Xbox can. You don't have to spend any money on buying PC games because you most people already have a Steam library. People already have their Steam friends. You can crossplay with all your friends who are gaming from a PC. And then for more advanced users, you can go into desktop mode and install all the emulators and everything you want, and then go right back to Steam OS. Even if you are still concerned about the specs, Valve also claims that the Steam machine is better than 70% of people's computers on the Steam hardware survey. And that doesn't surprise me at all. As a university student, I don't really know a lot of people who have crazy gaming setups. Most people if they're gaming on a PC, they're either using a older gaming setup from when they were younger, or they're playing lighter games like Minecraft or Roblox on just a basic laptop, or they have a console. Point I'm trying to make is I don't really know anyone with a top of the line gaming rig that people seem to have expected Valve to drop. And in my opinion, for a lot of these currently somewhat casual gamers, even if they play a lot of games, their hardware is just casual hardware, this will be the perfect device for them. Think of how many people have been wanting to game on maybe a 4K TV, and the next best thing for them right now would be just purchasing a crazy expensive NVIDIA GPU, or trying to hassle with getting FSR to work on their current hardware and current setup. Now, even though the Steam Machine isn't marketing itself as being able to do native 4K, I think using FSR for a lot of people with the upscaling is a very good middle ground for this, especially if they make it a very seamless experience. And I think that's something Valve has to get right, but I actually trust they will get it right with how well SteamOS currently works on the Steam Deck. As long as they make the FSR upscaling super duper seamless and convenient to use or people might not even realize that they're using it, I think most people will be fine running their games either at 144p or 1080p and upscaling it to 4k. Additionally, even though Valve has already stated that they're not going to sell the Steam Machine at a loss the same way they did with the Steam Deck, I actually see it still as a very good value in the fact that you don't have to purchase any games for it. You, Everyone already has a ton of games in their Steam library, and all of these games that they purchase to play on their PC will be able to play on their Steam machine too, minus the anti-cheat games. 
And like I said earlier, they're also bringing their Steam friend lists, their achievements, their profiles, just everything they already have to this new console. Now, I think one of the reasons the Xbox is doing so badly is because the Xbox One was a relative flop and the Xbox One generation with the PS4 was the generation where people were building up their digital library of games. And so now when the PS5 comes around, they already have all these PS4 games in their digital library. So I, they kind of have to get a PS5 if they aren't trying to repurchase all their games. Valve was able to circumvent this, making all your Steam games already compatible with the Steam machine, minus the anti-cheat. Now, one market I think this would do phenomenal in is a lot of younger audiences. Think of like middle schoolers, high schoolers, and like college students who want to get a game console, but they need something to do their homework too. Now, think of the pitch to mom as like a middle schooler. Uh, I want to play games with all my friends. I want this new game console, but I also can use it to do my homework. I kind of see this as a very similar thing to why the PlayStation 2 was so successful. A lot of younger audiences were telling their parents, hey, I want this PlayStation to play games on, but PlayStation 2 can also play DVDs. And that is how the PlayStation 2 became one of the best selling consoles of all time. I think Valve could easily do that with the Steam Deck just by selling it as your video game console that's also a PC so you can do your schoolwork on it. Younger audiences will love it for that. Even for college students, for example, they can end up just getting like their cheap laptop that they bring to their classes to take notes on. And then they can have their Steam Deck as their gaming device that can also function as a desktop if they want to sit down with a real keyboard and get some real work done. Now, how successful will the Steam Machine be for Valve? Because I think that the Steam Machine will help Linux a lot, but how much it helps Linux also depends a lot on how successful the Steam Machine is. I think there's two different realities we could live in with the Steam Machine. It could be a relative success for Valve, but not that successful, kind of like what the Steam Deck is right now. The Steam Deck, successful product, but also like still niche. And I think the Steam Machine could potentially end up like that. And if that's the case, I think we'll continue the current status quo we have right now of most games running well on Linux, but the anti-sheet not working. Although we could see a lot more people start to build their own Steam Machines and everything. However, I also think that the Steam Machine came at the perfect time to just completely be the finishing blow to the Xbox. Like I said earlier, Xbox sales have completely gone flat and the brand reception around Microsoft's entire ecosystem around gaming right now is very poor. People aren't buying Xboxes, people hate Windows 11. And so I think if Microsoft just eventually completely gives up in the console race, similar to what Sega did during the PS2 generation, then similar to what the original Xbox did during the PS2 generation, Valve could quickly establish itself as a new player in the console hardware space and I don't think that they will sell as many consoles as Nintendo or Sony, but I do see a world where Xbox gets knocked down and then the Steam Machine ends up overpassing the Xbox in sales and becoming the third major player in the console wars instead of Xbox. And if that happens, that would be very good news for Linux because then game developers would be forced to find some sort of solution to get their games working on SteamOS. So they could finally be getting their anti-cheats working in Proton or maybe making Linux native versions that have their own Linux native anti-cheats. And if that happens, that's a very good thing for Linux because I think gaming might be its current biggest barrier of entry, even of how much better Linux gaming has got. Just because I remember when I was a teenager, we all have these friend groups we play games with and you don't want to be the guy who says, I can't, I can't join the Fortnite squad because I'm on Linux. Like no one wants to be that guy. And that's why Windows is still dominant in gaming or one of the reasons why. With a lot of other stuff, you can just move over to a random alternative to do your work. Like instead of using Microsoft Office, just use only Office or Google Docs. But there isn't really any alternative to a very, very specific game that all your friends are playing. Additionally, I think it may inspire more people to try out Linux for gaming. There's a lot of people who want a living room console experience who might not buy a Steam machine, not because they don't want that experience, but because they already have capable hardware and maybe they throw on Bazai instead and build their own Steam machine. And lastly, I think Valve is finally achieving their goal talked about in the beginning of this video of reducing their dependence on Microsoft because now they have 
two full platforms that they can fall back on, that being the Steam Deck for handhelds and the Steam Machine for home consoles. I'm not even talking about the Steam Frame yet too. That's also a whole new platform they have running Steam OS. But now, if for some reason Microsoft decides to completely lock down Windows 11, they now have a full backup platform with Steam OS that they can use. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this informative, you might like my video on how I'm trying to make Linux mainstream with still OS. I'll throw that somewhere on the screen for you to click and goodbye.